This video I think is going to be very long but I'll try and keep it short because we've got a lot of things to cover here. Um, what we're going to do in this one, we're going to show you how to um, uh, use the deck control as I discussed in that last video which is on that part of the panel there um, and use it to do um, in live recordings and playbacks using two decks that I have connected to at the moment. One is a HyperDeck Studio with the RS422 port, and the other one is a uh, Panasonic uh, DVC Pro HD 1200. Um, so it gives you an indication of both types of decks that we're using here. Um, on here, as I said before, the position button, frame it up there, the position button selects between deck one and deck two. Um, we have all the machine controls down here, so um, I've changed a bit of software here, you probably noticed, but um, those two um, lights flashing down there, which are the two jog buttons, um, when they're both flashing, it means that the machine's in, actually in stop mode, um, because I never had a, a, a tally for stop before. Uh, and of course this is play, if I hit play, you'll see the deck up here is playing, um, there it is here playing over there, um, and if I shuttle, I can shuttle it back. Um, and uh, if I hit this button here, whoop, I can then go, and this is the, um, on this side here you'll see that's the, um, the DVC Pro Deck, so you can actually see all the digitising as it's, as it's shuffling. Um, so I'm just going to put that there for the moment, um, and you can see it's play, um, and you can then jog it, and then I set a little window over here. Um, shows um, jogging. Who's jogging there? So that's the that's the DVC Pro deck. Um, I'm going to go switch back over to the um, HyperDeck Studio. Um, and the way we record is that we hold our finger on the shift button, and we then press the play button and hold it. I'm going to come back here so you can see it. I'm going to hold it for um, just over half a second. And when I take my finger off, it's now in record. When it's in record, all the lights are flashing out. You, you probably notice that everything on this control panel here for uh, deck control, everything flashes. And that's just it's deliberately done that way so that you know that any lights on this panel flashing means it's in deck control, which is normally uh, identified by the fact that none of the lights down here are on. Um, so there's that um, deck. It's in, actually in record now. And... Um, change hands. Now I can then use the um, Q buttons while it's in record here uh, again by holding my finger down and taking my finger off it's now entered a Q point. So having entered that Q point it's still in record um, and as you can see the good old trusty uh, ATM2 has shifted the picture to the left one day they'll get that fixed but anyhow regardless of that um, we can now then press the Q button, and I'll come back here so you can see it, I press the Q button and then it instantaneously cues to where we put that mark in and then we can then either go and hit slow-mo um, and then jog slow-mo and then freeze it and then come back into jog. Um, we can then pre press Q again and it'll cue back to the beginning um, and a little trick here so when you're in record and you hit a Q button it automatically puts in a out point or a what I call a still frame point so that if you've got autoplay on which we will talk in another video it will um, you can enable um, autoplay by using the shift and the enter button when, when you're in deck mode which we'll show you in the next video um, and that will allow you to um, transition to the um, tape machine and it will uh, automatically play it and then if you have um, if you hit that cue point while it was in record it's automatically set an out point so it won't run over into old recording or no recording it'll, it'll actually freeze frame at that point minus a, um, minus a value so Seeing that we've queued to the endpoint, you can actually hit 
the cue button again when you're actually queued and I'll actually show you that out point. So that's the actual out point. If I go back and hit it again, there's our in point. I'll just come back here so you can see it. And there's our out point. So as I say, if the queue, if the deck's already queued and you hit the queue button again, it'll queue and show you your freeze point. Um, so subsequently, if we um, um, if we play that um, here, um, there it is playing, um, and then at any time you can then hit the queue point, and it'll go to the beginning. So if you're not quite sure where you are, is all you have to do is just hit the play button. And then hit Q, and then you know that it'll go back to always go back to the Q in point, not the Q out point. Um, the um, when you're in record, let's go back into record. I go to the end of that recording by just hitting the Q point again. So it's gone to the end of the recording. I'm going to hit Shift and play for half a second. And now it's gone back into record, and we're not actually we haven't actually if it was a tape deck. We haven't actually recorded over anything because we've gone to the end of that last recording. But being a hyperdeck, it never records over anything anyhow. So you can actually um, go along and um, I can keep that cue point there and I can then go along and just continually marking other cue points while it's still in record. There it is, still in record. And... And so we're still in record, so at any time now, I may have marked six different points in a bit of game, or sorry, five different points in a bit of a game, and I can then just hit the button, and it'll go and queue to each one of those queue points as marked. And there they are there. Go back there. And then at any time, of course, we can then go in and do a slow-mo, and then... Um, Freeze it wherever I need to. That's just jump shifted again. Anyhow, I know what's happening here, but I don't think Black Magic know what's happening at their end. Um, now, um, we also have the ability um, to manually enter cue points, um, which you'll be able to do on the on the optional configuration uh, panel when I um, when I build it, um, but. By using the Telnet connection, which I've discussed before, um, this particular Telnet connection, which connects to um, my little board back here, which is flashing away madly, um, it just connects again through the um, internet, the, the Ethernet connector, um, using the uh, IP address that you can set up in the panel. And on this particular on this particular um, Telnet connection. You can manually enter in any data at all, um, and I've done it such that it's a, it's in script mode. So you can actually write um, numbers uh, or type them up, as I've done on this little text file here. And um, that text file there, you can then just copy and paste into the, into uh, this window here. Um, and I'll give you an example. So over here, I just have I just see if I can frame it up here and do it all one-handed again. Uh, where's my cursor? There it is. So I'm just going to just drag that there. I'm just going to copy it. And then I'm just going to come over here, and this is using um, PuTTY, which is a, a, a network, uh, sorry, a terminal program uh, in Telnet mode. If I just right click on there, it actually has just downloaded it, downloaded the um, the one cue point, but it actually shows you the cue points um, for both decks. So there's decks over there. Let's see if I how far I can zoom in. Um, yeah, so there's deck one, deck two, um, and um, they're, the, they're the registers. So registers one to five for deck one, one to five, deck two. And then there's two lots of time codes for each register. There's a cue point and a still, a still point. Now I've just, I just downloaded one number, which was deck one q1 um, and a time code and you see over here now deck one q1 has a time code and <clears throat> if i if i tell this hit this q1 button it will queue to that time code and there it is there and if you have a look at the actual time code go back to the beginning there it is 10 30 
So that's how you can um, you can um, ma manually set time codes besides using the uh, configuration panel. Um, I've just looked at my duration. I've already gone 10 minutes on this, and I haven't even started to cover stuff. But I'll give you a quick example here. Um, here I've set a whole. I've set all registers to zero, which will clear everything. So I'm just going to copy those. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to paste them. And there, as it's going, it's actually, you notice all the, all the queue lights have gone off and I'll go to the second deck and there's no queue lights left at all because those commands sent zeros to all the registers which tells it that zero is a non-functional queue point, um, which, which can come in quite handy for um, just clearing out everything and starting all over again. Um, I think I might have to end this video here and continue on with a part three because I don't want to keep these going any longer than um, 10 minutes. But I just want to quickly I'll just quickly show you um, uh, the, the actual DVC Pro deck, which um, is, a, is a tape deck itself. So again, on, on this DVC Pro deck, uh, you can see I've selected it's my deck two. And now I'm going to go over here, holding my finger on the shift button. Oh, fingers aren't long enough. And hit... Uh, play for half a second and take my finger off. Uh, let's do it right. There it is now. It's gone into record. All the lights are flashing saying it's in record. And again, I can um, um, hold my finger on an AQ button, take it off, it's set a Q point, and I'll come back here so you can see what happens. So then I'm then going to hit um, Q. And you see it's come out of record and now it's queuing and there it is queued ready for slow-mo and then I can press the slow-mo button and it'll do the slow-mo um, and again um, with the, as with the uh, hyperdeck uh, it will auto freeze if you've got um, auto play selected and again if I hit the um, Q button it'll go back to the beginning and then if I hit the Q button when it is queued it'll queue to the out point and that's there is now when I can actually go into crash record again um, and I can hit the right button alright well it won't do it but believe me it does do it I think I might be at the end of the tape. That's probably why I won't go any further. Um, okay, so um, I will um, uh, next video. I will show you more on um, entering um, time codes for in and out points, and in particular, I'll show you how to have specified video ins and outs, um, and how you can instantaneously access them on both decks. Uh, for doing, if you want to do a whole sequence of playing back video inserts into your show or something like that. And then if it doesn't run too long, uh, I'll also uh, show you the uh, stills, auto still, auto play. Uh, and I'll also show you the preemptive, uh, which I've also allowed so you can uh, adjust for the different um, ballistics of different decks, uh, which... I think we'll probably have to go into another video again because it's quite involved. But, but the um, preemptive, um, I've got it down so it's frame accurate, so that when you, when you cut to the deck, um, the cut is delayed until the deck is actually playing. But you'll see that in that video. Look, I'm gone 15 minutes, uh, and again, I'm sorry for that.